All right, folks, for more on the Iranian funds, which we didn't get to talk about quite enough, but let's bring in Richard Goldberg, who knows a whole lot about it, senior advisor at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies and former White House NSC director. Richard, thank you for doing this short notice. We appreciate it very much. So just walk through the mechanics of this. I mean, this is... Um, Iraqi money, this is not for humanitarian, this is not for food and medicine. As I understand it, this is for oil, gas, and electricity. So I don't know what the State Department spokespeople are saying. They're just lying through that. And why is this money going there anyway in a time of war? Well, thanks for having me, Larry. Uh, if everybody remembers the $6 billion, the ransom payment we paid uh, Iran for five hostages that moved out of South Korea to Qatar, and the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House on a bipartisan basis after October 7th said freeze the money. Well, what we've just seen is that $10 billion just got opened up for Iran on top of the $6 billion out of accounts that were frozen in Iraq. This is money that the Iraqis were paying into an escrow account, $10 billion, to import electricity during the Trump administration. And until now, in the Biden administration, we said the Iraqis had to keep that money in escrow. The Iranians couldn't access it. Now we're opening up those funds, letting Iran access $10 billion, convert it from Iraqi dinar into euros, move into accounts in Oman. And my goodness, after October 7th, after 55 attacks on U.S. forces since October 17th, what are we doing here, Larry? So just to be clear, Richard, this is uh, a Biden executive decision, okay? There's, there's, no, there's no magic here. There's no reason why this money has to go any place except stay in that little frozen account. Is it an Oman bank in Iraq? I don't know who the banks are in Iraq. Whose bank is it? Do you have any idea? Real quick. We originally required them to put it into escrow in the Trade Bank of Iraq. Oh, and now we don't right. know the names of banks being used in Europe right. or Oman. But it's moving around, yeah. $10 billion. That's a lot of budget support. That's a lot of money for terrorism opened up. So the point is, this is a discretionary action by the Biden administration. There's no rhyme or reason why they have to do this. And in a time of war, right, any, all promises are off the table because of what they've done. And we know that Iran is the puppet master and the financier uh, of this entire uh, awful Hamas war. So what happens now, Richard? In other words... Steve Daines didn't really exactly answer the question. Um, we had Steve Scalise on. Maybe the House can vote on the $6 billion to not freeze it, but they're not going to be in session for the next few days. I want to know, is there something that can be done to absolutely stop this uh, besides public suasion, or, or are we going to sit idly by and let Joe Biden and Anthony Blinken just give Iran another $10 billion so they can go out and kill more Israelis? What can I will be done? tell you right what now, can be Senator done? McConnell, the Senate, yeah. if, if Senator McConnell and the Senate Republicans go to the floor with a bill that says we're locking down all this $10 billion and the $6 billion, just erase the waiver, erase the licenses that the Treasury Department and State Department are using, and say we will not allow business until we get an up or down vote, you will get that passed in the United States Senate. Democrats are not going to vote against that. They and it will pass the United States House of Representatives, and we will end this. All right. Have you talked to uh, McConnell, or you talked to people who talked to McConnell? I, I need an action plan. I'm, I'm, I, look, I'll do it. I'll do it after the show. I'll, I'll, I'll start getting in action. Somebody's got to stop this from happening. Money is fungible, no matter what these uh, State Department uh, people uh, are saying. So, all right. So, basically, though, just to finish this up, we appreciate your time, Richard Goldberg. This is a discretionary executive branch decision. There's no law, no rhyme, no reason why this has to happen except for Biden stupidity or foolishness. Correct. This is broke back Iran, and he just can't quit appeasement of this regime. All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it very much. Richard Goldberg, formerly of the Trump National Security Council. Thank you, Richard. We appreciate it. All right, folks.